It's Mike Gallagher. People who have a sense of history know about uh, the Hitler uh, mechanisms uh, politically to get control, and and they were totalitarian to begin with. But they entertained those forces that would reinforce them. Hey, Mike, I tell you what the biggest problem is. Them stinking hypocrites like Al Sharpton, the BLM movement, the gay movement, the LGBTQT, whatever movement. They're a bunch of stinking hypocrites for people's rights. And then they want to stick and point finger at Israel and want to, want to, the anti-Semitism is sickening, but they won't stand up for anybody. They won't stand up for Israel and for human rights, period. My name is Max Burke. I could not be more proud of my Judaism than I am today. I love America. I was a Marine in Vietnam. And we will win. God bless you. 19 past the hour. Let's dive in and talk to Jewish callers. What's it feel like to be a Jewish American in the time we're living in? Here's a United States congressman, congresswoman, actually, being a member of of a disgusting pro-Hamas Facebook group, a secret Facebook group. And that's important that you know that because this organization is hidden from non-members of Congress and it does not appear on the platform's search search engine, although Fox News Digital was able to gain access to it. Mark's in Chicago. 800-655-MIKES, our number. Hi, Mark. Welcome aboard. How are you? Hi, Mike. I'm I'm good. All right. Tell me yes, what you think. Fi- I'm sorry. Yeah, you didn't interrupt you. Go ahead. Yeah. You you wonder what I'm, how I feel if the rising at the sound can be honest. I, I don't feel safe in my own home anymore. Uh, for, for the first time in my life, I I decided I need to to get myself a firearm just to protect myself. And isn't that, isn't it crazy? I mean, this is what I want people to hear. You know, I've been trying to compare what we Christians feel all the time about being mocked in the media, you know, being a, I don't think we feel unsafe in our own home because of our Christianity, but I was, I, I, I was suspecting that many Jewish Americans do. You feel, you, you don't feel safe in your own country. Yeah, I mean, it's, I've lived in Chicago, which has already got issues, but I, I generally felt safe in my neighborhood, my home. I don't feel that way anymore, and I'm not alone. I know a lot of a lot of the community members have been buying guns at, at, at a rate that, that that exceeds anything in the past. You must. I, I think you must. I mean, that's good advice, and I hate that you have to even feel that way, feel so unsafe. But having a gun for personal protection, getting trained, getting certified, knowing what you're doing, having proper firearms, that's, frankly, that's something that every American should do. But isn't it fascinating that a Jewish American living in Chicago feels a need to now go get a gun? Andrea is in Atlanta, Georgia, from Chicago to Atlanta. Hi, Andrea. How are you? Hey there, Mike. Hey, How are you? I'm great, thanks. Appreciate the call. So I um, I just have to say that it's it's um, really disheartening to see people like to leave up there and getting away with it. And I feel like our our Republicans, you know, a lot of them have been strong, and some Democrats have been as well. But um, you know, I'd like to hear from more of them in a strong stance. I mean, she's got the Palestine flag hanging out at her office. I feel like even synagogues should be stronger with their flags, you know, uh, all Jewish community centers should be as well. So it, I, I have my star on every single day. I have a, a bumper magnet. I stand with Israel and um, I'd like to see more of them. I'd like to see more cars with them. Last night, Dennis Prager on the at the event we were in in Tampa said that every American, every non-Jew, should should, should have a mezuzah. a mezuzah on our front door uh, that and and that's a that would be a powerful powerful statement to the world and, and absolutely because that's the only way you defeat this kind of evil is stand up to it you got to stand up to it i i can't agree with you more and i um all i can say is trump 2024 there you I go love the man yep and he he's you know everybody's like oh he's so divisive he says they hate him they hate any Republican Correct. that's going to run. And he's the only one that has done what he's done. He was the best friend. 
for Israel and these people that say, oh, I hate his stance, he's racist, he's this. I know veterans that will say to me, well, he said that we were suckers and losers all the day. And I'm like, no, it's the lies that they continue to repeat and these people believe them. Make no mistake, Andrea, they're terrified of him and they're terrified of us. They are afraid of what the American people might just deliver to the uh, to the Trump hating universe. Glad you called. Thank you for sharing this with us. Eight hundred six five five Mike. Stan is in Hartford, Connecticut. Stan, I understand you were at the big rally yesterday in Washington D.C. I certainly was, Mike, and I sure want to thank you for all of your support. You, you know, I've been listening to you for years, but you really, really come through, and I we really appreciate all of your kind words and your. And, and your support. Uh, it was amazing yesterday. I definitely feel a more of an oppressive sense than I've ever felt before. In the Hartford area, not bad. Uh, of course, increasing increased security, you know, if I, it, it's just what you gotta do. And uh, we just try our best. You did, know? You ever, did you, ever, sure did you ever, did you ever expect, Stan, that we could get to this point in America? Uh, yeah, I've always known that, you know, they've always said from from my youth, I remember people saying, remember, it can always happen here. Things could change at any time. Right. I never, but I, but I never lived it. You know, it's like 9-11 changed my life. I went actually from being an independent to a conservative mm-hmm. in one day because I realized that the conservative party was the only ones that understand security and safety. Right. And then now we've had our own, Israel's had its 9-11 and we, I have... A dozen friends, I'm, you know, you have you have personal friends, uh, you people you care about your people, you care about your nation. I, I mean, I love. I'm a. I would fight and die for America, and I would fight and die for Israel. Uh, but I'm an old, too old for either of those. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I have uh, dozens of personal friends that are on the front lines. These are amazing, amazing young people uh, who are just there to do good. Well, again, as, as to, to the to, you know, I've been I, I shared that I've been having this back and forth with a uh, Muhammad from Detroit who called the show yesterday, and he and I've had a little bit of an exchange on on Twitter, and you know, he he just feels like we're all one sided here, that somehow there's there's a moral equivalency between Hamas, I guess, uh, and and Israel. Now he he tries to differentiate or distinguish between Hamas and the Palestinians, but let's face it. If you're part of a Facebook group praising Hamas, that's a huge, huge problem. We're dealing with something here that we've never really witnessed. And and this, again, I say it over and over again, this extraordinary anti-Semitism is deeply, deeply alarming. Uh, speaking... 